Hi guys, Yovi from the future here. Please stay tuned till the end of this video so that I can show you a little bit about Peter Pot, which is the first and only online package-free supermarket in the world. And guess what? It's Dutch. Hi, welcome to Yovi's home. I post new videos every Tuesday and mostly on Thursdays. Today, I wanted to share with you guys seven observations that I've made about the major Dutch supermarkets. So if that sounds good to you, why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. Before we get into today's video, can we address the elephant in the room? And that is that I am a ray of sunshine today. <laughs> Yellow is my favorite color and I realize it's yellow in my earrings, yellow top, yellow nails. Yes, okay, I'm here. I am radiating to you to hope that you feel warm and cozy. And it was an accident, but it is what it is, so we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> Next, the Dutch word of the day. I'm thinking there's so many words that we could use to, about Dutch supermarkets, but Today's Dutch word of the day is, you know what? It's for you, Editor Dan, because I know that there is a meme that you wanted to use in our live streams when we stopped posting for a little while. And so I'm gonna give you an opportunity to insert it now when we talk about the Dutch word of the day, which is gonna be hamsteren. <laughs> and hamsteren actually in English translates to hamster, but you're like, probably like, what the hell does that have to do with a supermarket? Let me tell you. Because in this context, when we talk about supermarkets, we are not talking about actual hamsters. We are talking about the concept of hoarding a little bit. So for example, the biggest supermarket here in the Netherlands is called Albert Heijn. And they will often, like in several times during the year, they will have what they call like hamster week. Um, in which case it's like big sales and they encourage people to buy lots of staples, you know, so they'll do like whatever, like 10 for 10 euros of whatever product. So they're like encouraging you to like really like hoard that sh stuff. My first observation about Dutch supermarkets has to do with what is called a koopzegel. Okay. Dutch people, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm using this to the best of my knowledge and understanding, but it is kind of like a savings program. Not every supermarket has it. Certainly Albert Heijn does, and that is the one where I shop at the most, so I'm using them. What Koopzegels are is you can go, you buy your stuff, your groceries, and then they will ask you at the checkout if you want to buy these stamps. Each stamp costs something like 10 cents and you get a little savings booklet and you save, save, save. Um, I think something like 490 stamps. So then you've paid 49 euros into like investing of these stamps to the supermarket. And then once your book is full, you take it back and they give you 53 euros back. I think that's how it works. Or you've paid 50 euro for the stamps and then you get 53 back. So it's like a way that you can save money that's not via the bank, um, that has a pretty good rate of return. You know, they give you money. It's not like that you get, um, you don't get like a voucher for the store. It is actual cash money that you can save and get back. So these are cool. This is a cool kind of savings program that I've never heard of in any other country. Can you guys tell me, certainly not in America, but if, you're watching from, I don't know, France, Germany, Sweden, whatever, let me know, do your supermarkets have this kind of savings program? Number two. Number two is Sparzegels. So we've already talked about Kopzegels. Now let's talk about Sparzegels. Sparzegels are, um, supermarkets will sometimes have actions during the, the course of the year where, you know, if you spend for every 10 euros that you spend, you get a stamp for free. And then you, yeah, you save them on a little paper or whatever. And then once you have a certain number of stamps, you can then trade that in um, for a really nice discount on something nice. My favorite that Albert Hein has usually running for between November and February, 
They have a really nice action that you can save up for wine glasses or decanters. A few years ago, they had it for like really nice like cutlery, you know, forks, knives, things like that. Um, a few years before that, they had where you could save up for pots and pans. So you're spending this money at the supermarket anyway. If you're not buying anything extra, although sometimes they will have, like you might get an extra stamp for buying a specific item, but you are just buying your groceries as normal. You are getting these stamps, you are saving them, and then you can turn in your completed booklet or whatever, how many ever stamps you had to have. And then for like one or two euros extra, then you get like, for example, six wine glasses, something like that, which is really nice. Um, I definitely love those deals. It's nice. In the summertime, the the Spar Zegels actions are more for things like if you get a full booklet, then you can you buy one ticket to, for example, the Efteling, which is like Dutch Disneyland, and then you get one for free or, you know, kind of like discounts on more um, days out, Dachje, the Dachje's out cards, where, you know, they partner up with zoos or events, museums, things like that. And then you can get like, you, you get discounts on those tickets to be able to do more stuff. So that's pretty cool. Once again, I'm not sure if that is something that happens outside of the Netherlands. If you're watching this from a country that is not here, please let us know in the comments. Um, but these two are really big for me, like big differences. The third observation that I want to talk about Dutch supermarkets is that they don't really have like a coupon culture the way that you do in the States. Um, I don't know, Dutch people, if you know this, there was for many years, maybe it's still running, I'm not sure, but there was a program on the TLC channel called Extreme Couponing, which, wow, if you've seen that. <laughs> um, but basically in the States, if you save up enough coupons and you can use like, you know, you can literally like, like you can take this thick of a stack of coupons to the shop and you can get well, on the TLC show, it was like, you get a thousand dollars worth of groceries for $3 because you've used up all your coupons. Um, that is not the case here. I feel like maybe it's starting. Let me know you guys what you think, because I do get the, when I order my groceries, I get the Albert Heijn Allerhande magazine. And when I flip through that magazine, I do see coupons from time to time, but it is no, nowhere near like the super coupon culture um, that exists in the States that I'm familiar with. So um, yeah, and then other shops also don't really do coupons. There's lots of sales and like buy one, get one free. There's like lots of like, they call them actions or offers, um, but not in the sense that you would be like reading a newspaper, clipping a coupon and then taking it to the shop and benefiting from the discount. That is not a thing here. Um, maybe it's becoming more so. Let me know what you guys think. But that is, yeah, that's what it is. How is it in other European countries or other countries um, wherever you might be watching from? Let me know. Do you guys do coupons or not so much? Number four. Now, number four, it bugs me even though I've been here for so long only because, well, I get annoyed at myself. It's not at the system but I never have it, okay? So here's what it is. You have to pay to get a cart. And it's not just in the supermarkets. I should I should mention, if you go to other places where, super, where carts are available, you generally have to pay for them. And when I say pay, it's not like, you, it's not a permanent paying. It's, you have to use a coin. Usually it accepts a 50 cents or a one euro coin. Um, and you put it in the cart and then you can, unattach the cart from the others and use it. And then when you return it, you pl like plug it back in and then your coin comes back out and you take it. Um, I'm sure that this is just to encourage people to bring their cart back to where it goes because certainly in the States, when you don't have to do that, people just tend to leave their cart like wherever their car was. So then you do need to employ a person who will go around collecting all the carts all over the parking lot, which that's a, another expense for the shop. Um, so I understand why this is the case, but 
but I don't ever have the right coin. Are you with me? Is there anybody else that feels my pain? I never have the right coin. Um, I was really excited. Um, once my car, the garage that fixes my car, they gave me like a little keychain, and on that keychain was a little um, coin that was the correct shape, and then you could use that. So anytime I had my car keys, I had the right little coin, but then that thing fell apart, and now again, I don't have the right coins. <laughs> What's the trick? Is there a trick to remembering? Like, is there a thing that you guys do that is much smarter than me being like, I don't have a 50 cent coin. What, how do you guys remember? What do you do? And tell me all your secrets, please. Thank you. <laughs> Number five. Number five about Dutch supermarkets um, is that you have to pack your own groceries. So we've talked about this before in the States. I have mentioned in a, in a previous video that one of the things that I noticed um, is that in the States, you know, there's a person who is checking out your groceries and then another person waiting at the end of the little, you know, the little, what is that thing called? Conveyor belt, that's what it's called. <laughs> There is another person at the end of the conveyor belt waiting and they will pack your groceries and you just kind of stand there like a queen, like waiting, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then you, and then you leave. Um, that's not the case here. Here they scan and then boop, off it goes and you have to pack your own groceries. Fine. It's a matter of getting used to it. No problems here. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it was something that I observed. It was different when you know, from what I was used to. So that is something like, if you're coming here, even for a visit or whatever, and you're gonna go to the grocery store, just be prepared. And also bring your reusable bags because that's how Europe rolls. Number six. Number six is something that I really noticed and I just find it funny at this point. I just, I've come to accept it. Yeah, like this is something that you need to come to terms with and just accept that this is the way of life here and it's fine, is that there are shelf stackers always in the way. <laughs> Somebody is always refilling one of the shelves and they're blocking whatever it is that you're gonna need to reach with their, you know, cart thing. More than once, I've gone there and seen the cart just standing there and the stacker is nowhere to be found. Probably he is helping or she is helping another customer look for something. So they've just like left their post. But on more than one occasion, I've had to like physically move their thing, get what I want, put it in my cart and then move the thing back. So that is something you just need to get used to. Um, and in general, the aisles are pretty, pretty narrow. So they do take up a lot of space, but you know what? It is what it is. They stack the shelves during opening hours while, while people are shopping in the shop. That is different than in the States um, when when um, shelves are stacked, like when the store is closed or like if it's a 24 hour grocery store, they'll be stacked in the nighttime and not during the daytime. But that's, that's just how it is, okay? Here, groceries get stacked during the day while you're there and most likely you will be annoyed at some point by the fact that that's happening. Usually when you're in a rush. <laughs> Okay, number seven, and this is the last observation that I'm gonna talk about in this video about Dutch supermarkets. And that is that the people who work at the checkout, like the, the cashiers, they sit while they are working, which is awesome, but also not what I'm used to. And you know, I really wonder actually why that is in the States. Why do the cashiers have to stand for their entire shift when they're scanning stuff. I don't know, but in the Netherlands, that is not the case. In the Netherlands, they have, you know, a chair, they can sit, they're like boop, 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 scanning, off they go. All your stuff is over there, they can do all their stuff and they don't need to stand, which is like great from a human perspective, right? <laughs> like it's much better to be able to sit during the day and, you know, be a little bit more comfortable than to have to stand on your feet all day. So, but that was something that maybe if you come from the States and you walk into a Dutch supermarket, it, it, it stands out at you. Like it's something that you notice. 
again, not in a bad way, but it is something that you're just like, oh, that's different. You know, that is different than what I've seen. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I was a cashier in the States and I saw what, how like the cashiers are working in Europe, I'd be like, give me a chair, yo, get that. I want to be comfy. I can still work and sit. Why, why do office workers get to sit and I don't get to sit? You know, I'm, I don't need to stand. I'm not running a marathon here. I can totally sit and scan. It's totally fine. Peter Pot is the world's first and only package free supermarket. They deliver your groceries in beautiful glass jars for the same price as the regular supermarket. Once you use up the contents of your jar, you return it and Peter Pot cleans it and then reuses the jars. There's no minimum order amount, which is pretty exciting for an online supermarket. Peter Pot aims to deliver all over the Netherlands by August 2020, and you can sign up for the national waiting list now. Although cities like Rotterdam and The Hague are already able to order and receive groceries from Peter Pot. From shampoo bars to almonds, lentils, pasta, beeswax wrap, and even bamboo toothbrushes, you can find all kinds of items there. I just wanted to say thank you to Peter Pot for sending me your start paquet. I'm really impressed with your service. Your, I mean, your customer service was great. Working with you has been a real pleasure, and I love what you're doing for our planet. So thank you so much, and good luck with growing this further. So you guys, that completes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.